Meta recently released Llama 4, which is their new open source large language model. It's a family of three and it's available right now. And I partnered with Meta for this video to give you the breakdown of all the different versions of Llama 4 and what they have to offer. And later in the video, I'll show you a couple of different websites where you could try it for free for yourself. And I'll show you how to download it too if you're a developer and you wanna play around with Llama 4 for your applications. Okay, so Llama 4, and I've covered all the different Llama models every time they release a new model. And this version of it, Llama 4, comes in three different sizes. So you have Llama 4 Behemoth, Llama 4 Maverick, and Llama 4 Scout. And I kind of like to think of this, this is the large one, this is the medium-sized one, and this is the smallest one they make. Now, all these models are multimodal, which is great, but the biggest thing that stood out to me is the context window. It completely changes how we're gonna think and use context windows. Okay, right here, I'll just show you Scout. It has an industry-leading 10 million token context window, which is about 5 million words. Now, just to put that in perspective, ChatGPT with GPT-40 still has a context window of 128,000. Basically, that's your input. That's all the context that it could remember in a conversation. 128,000 versus 10 million. Even Gemini, which is the best model right now for context windows before this came out, is at 2 million. Now, let me walk you through each model. I want to just emphasize the key points here, and I want to just simplify it a bit because this is a little bit technical, but I usually make videos that are a little bit more simple, so I'll walk you through just the key points in a simpler way. Now, the first one in the batch is called Llama 4 Scout. This is the smallest model they have, and it's a general purpose model, but it does also have multimodal capabilities, so you could understand text as well as images. And it has 17 billion active parameters, 16 experts, and 109 billion total parameters. So I'm going to explain exactly what this means right now. Now this number 109 billion parameters, what parameters are, they're basically like a setting when the model is going through training, right? So the more parameters they have, typically the more capable the model is going to be. And you'll see that we're starting with the smallest one at 109 billion, and it will go up much, much higher with the biggest model they have. Now this part, 17 billion active parameters, this makes the model a whole lot more efficient. So instead of using 109 billion total parameters all the time, it's gonna use 17 billion at any given time. And the way it does that is right here, 16 experts. So let me explain what this is. So these are basically mixture of expert models. So the way they work is instead of the full model working all the time, mixture of experts uses only parts of the models that is needed for that very specific task. Now, this graph explains this really well. So this mixture of experts, every time a request comes in, so you ask it to do something, it will activate two, three, or four different experts depending on what's most relevant instead of having all of it available. Now, this process keeps the high performance, but it makes the whole thing faster and more efficient. Now, that 17 billion active parameters can actually run entirely on one single NVIDIA H100 GPU, right? So it's a lot more resource friendly for its size and performance. It's still a big model, right? So it's gonna require a pretty beefy GPU, but only a single one. Now this 10 million token context window that I mentioned, this is by far the largest in the industry, right? For open source, for closed source, for any large language model, this beats everything else that's available right now. And that's gonna completely change how we use large language models. This is one of the big limitations of large language model. This is gonna handle a huge amount of text as input and output. And I've read a lot about what Meta's trying to do. They're clearly trying to push towards an infinite context window. And Scout, that could handle 10 million token context window, is well on its way there. It's basically trying to solve one of the biggest problems when it comes to using large language models. And when I first started using ChatGPT back in 2022, just to put this in context, the context window was 8,000 tokens. This is 10 million tokens now, just a couple of years later. Now, the process I'm using right now is kind of a workaround, but I would take large documents. This could be data documents, text documents, right? I trim them down or I chunk the data into different files, organize it, and try to give different large language models the size that it could handle, right? That it could handle in the context of that conversation. So it remembers what we're talking about within that chat, right? But with a 10 million token context window and moving towards infinite context window, that's never going to be a problem pretty soon. Even with 10 million context window, I don't think I have any type of documentation that is going to hit that limit. But I'm sure some people have much more bigger data sets they're trying to work with or analyze. 
So that is soon going to pretty much be solved with the way Meta is moving. And the benchmark for Llama 4 Scout, they compared it to the older Llama 3.3 model, 3.1. The biggest 3.1 model was 405 billion parameters and other open source models and also Gemini 2.1 flashlight. And again, this is multimodal. So some of these didn't have multimodal capabilities. This multimodal wins in pretty much every benchmark here that they tested. And obviously the context window, all these were about 128K, which was pretty standard. Now we're at 10 million on this side. Okay, the next one on the list, this is the medium model, Llama 4 Maverick. This has 128 experts and 400 billion total parameters. And he still manages to use the 17 billion active parameters to make it efficient to run on that single GPU that I mentioned. So that is very useful. Okay, Llama 4 Maverick, there's one thing that's really interesting about it. Even though it has 17 billion active parameters, that's still relatively small if you compare it to GPT-40, for example, or Gemini 2.0 Flash. But if you look at this benchmark, they compare it to those other models, DeepSeq V3.1 also, which is not multimodal. But you could see across the board, it's beating every single other model with Maverick. And here, when it comes to cost, it's very efficient, right? At 19 cents, starting at 19 cents for cost per 1 million input and output token, right? So on par with Gemini 2.0 Flash and a bit cheaper here than DeepSeq, which is another open source model. GPT-40 has a lot to go here to catch up with this kind of pricing. Now, when it comes to coding and reasoning, it's also performing on par with this DeepSeq model, but this DeepSeq model is using twice as many active parameters. So at half the active parameters, and again, using less parameters is more efficient because you could run on less of a hardware setup. Okay, let's get to the biggest one here. This is called Llama 4 Behemoth at 2 trillion parameters, right? 288 billion active parameters, 16 experts. And Behemoth right now is outperforming Gemini 2.0 Pro and it's beating Claude Sonnet 3.7 here in this benchmark, which is a STEM related benchmark. Now here's the wild part. This one is still in preview. That means it's still in training. <laughs> so it's having this kind of result in the benchmark while it's still in training. So this is really, really impressive here. Now the fact that this family of open source models could compete or beat almost every single closed source model from the top AI companies right now is a pretty big deal, right? When a developer or a company is considering building an app, using a large language model, well, they have a lot more control with an open source model like this. Now, if you're using other models like GPT to build an app or Claude to build an app, those have API access. That's how you pay those companies to use them, but that's gonna be limited, right? Open source is flexible, it's customizable. You could self-host it, you could fine tune it, right? A lot more you could do with an open source model than with a model that requires that API access. Now, let me share a couple of links with you so you could try this for yourself. You could try it on the web, or if you're a developer, you could download it. So request access to Llama models. You just fill this out here and then choose which model if you have the hardware to run these models here. And as I mentioned, this is the smallest one, medium sized one, and the behemoth is still in preview. So you won't be able to download that one, but these two are available right now. And you could also get it from the Hugging Face website, which is linked in their blog post here. And if you want to try it for yourself, I have a couple of resources for you. So I've been using it here. So this is the Meta AI website, meta.ai. If you ask it what model is he using, this is using Llama 4 right now. And every time I try to open source models, I really like this website too. So this is called Grok with a Q and it's at chat.grok.com. And if you look right here, you could actually choose different models, different open source models. So if you search for Llama, you'll see you could use Scout here and you could also use Maverick here. Okay, so if you choose one of these, it's gonna use this model to answer any type of a prompt you send out. But the coolest part about Grok is even though Meta AI is really fast, this might be a bit faster. I mean, it just answers you almost instantly here when you type in a text prompt. So if you wanna test it out, this is a good place. Obviously, Meta AI is gonna be a good place. They also rolled it out to all kinds of app that Meta owns. So it's on WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, and this is the web version here on Meta.ai. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video.